We're back, everybody. Well, hello, everyone. We're back again. Sorry we're a little late. Uh, Tyler was delayed for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Holding something up the about, show. So. Something about a wizard never being late and all that, all that business. <laughs> but um, welcome back. For some reason we're, I can't, I can't see. Can you see? Can, can I see? see? I can't see you, Tyler. Um, I don't know. Look at the Zoom call, dude. What are you doing? I know. I'm trying. Turn. I don't know. It's... You don't need to see Tyler. I don't all need right. to see Tyler. It doesn't matter. Yeah, who cares? Who cares? I can see you. That's all that matters. Um, so today we're doing, this is a Lightbox um, online special episode where we are going to paint away. I'm going to do digital painting today. You can see my Photoshop is up. And I'm going to paint like that. And um, Ray's going to be working, continuing. And that on. concludes our painting. And that's it. And we're done. And that's how you paint digitally. Uh, one brush and go. Um, Ray's <laughs> going to be working on his Wyatt Earp piece uh, from Tombstone. A amazing portrait of the one and only Kurt Russell. Um, I'm looking over here. I should be looking over here. I'm sorry. Call him, getting, call him Snake. Trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> call him Snake. Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm here too. My name's Kate Welch. And, and Kate your, Welch is here. I'm your chat. Yeah, moderator. I was going to. Oh, my God. All <laughs> no, right. F in I'm, the chat. If F in the chat. Do you F. think that Tyler should not introduce to the intro of the show? <laughs> I just yeah. wanted to say, hey, everybody, welcome. And so we have our first question while you guys are oh, nice. starting up. Um, Let's hear it. From okay. yesterday's All Star, Nito underscore Re. Do you three often video chat like this while working outside of streams? That sounds like fun. Oh, we used to do it quite a lot. And we've done it on and off, I guess, over oh, the years. Yeah. Well, right when we got out of school, I think we did it every day until we got sick of each other's faces. And then we <laughs> and we stopped talking to each other for about a year. <laughs> I got too yeah. good looking. That was the problem. <laughs> yeah, that was my biggest issue with it, really. And it was, when, <laughs> it was back when Ray lived in this great Gatsby-looking house in buffalo yeah. with like crazy archway you know like the way you got into your studio was like this crazy gilded archway or something wasn't it or i mean it was like yeah it was yes it was wild yeah yeah i mean like that the house was falling apart but it was pretty sweet it was like the end of the great gatsby spoilers <laughs> yeah you know, not, 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 not the good stuff yeah <laughs> So, uh, yeah, All we right. did. We did do it. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I, I really missed. Uh, well, that's the reason why we did this stream, right? I mean, it's because we were like, hey, remember that awesome thing? And I was, you know, where we would just hang out and take a look at like each other's artwork and like paint and talk about what we were up to, you know. Yeah, it was. Um, off each other. Yeah, it was like a, I don't know. I, I think it's because we came out of this big studio life you know where we're always bugging each other like day to day right so we right. wanted to keep that going and so we did it just about every day just like bouncing ideas off one another and i don't know it was super fun and i'm glad i mean that was kind of like the reason why we started doing this is oh, we yeah, wanted to absolutely. bring we wanted to bring that back yeah yeah for sure i mean I, I, for those of you who don't know tyler and i both went to to grad school together and that's that's where we met um so i was uh you know uh well, how did we meet i was w walking down and you you were uh you were just a young well, dude turning tricks in uh yeah you know, i mean you know san francisco it... you gotta do what you gotta do it's a hard town you know <laughs> um and yeah we had um i think the first class we had together was was a uh, head drawing and who, right? who taught that class who taught uh, that class? I... Some guy. Was it Bill Mon? Oh yeah. <laughs> ding 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 ding. Who had Bill Mon on their ding, on their ding, live rush video? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You win. You're the winner. Um yeah, that was our first class. And you were just come out of um what was it? God, you're real close to the camera, dude. You got it back on. Um, I, know, I was turning it down because it was like the Irish flower on was upon me, you know. Now we were you were coming out of animation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was in I was in uh 
3D animation and uh, 3D character animation uh, specifically in, in the grad program there. Cause I wanted to, I came to San Francisco to work for ideally for Pixar. And uh, I was, uh, I know I wanted to take these classes, these figure drawing classes. I kind of started to get into it on my, the last part of my um, uh, undergrad. And uh, yeah, I, I ended up falling in love with it. And then a semester later switching over to illustration and that's how that's how it happened so my first semester as an illustration major i we had i had bill mon's uh, head drawing class and that's that's right. where that's where we met you know and that's where um i always say that particular class um i always say i learned more in i learned more about making art in a week than i did in four years um of my yeah. undergrad Program. Yeah. No offense, my undergrad program. You guys are great. Yeah. But um, I learned a lot more about the kind of art I really wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. God, remember that first lecture? That was crazy. It was, was crazy. Like, mind blowing. Just uh, like simple concepts that I hadn't really um, thought about, I guess. Yeah. It was like so wild. He did. Bill explained basically the, the principles of uh, light on form and in like five minutes, you know, he was able to, he's one of the great teachers that was able to explain something super complicated in with extremely quickly and efficiently. And um, if you're looking for that, then uh, it, this stream is probably not for you. Uh, Cause we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not as good, you know, as, well, as I mean, as we're, we're great. We're amazing, but you know, we, we're just not that good. We're not that good. You no, wait, what are we what are we doing today i agree yeah i was just about to say um ray what are your plans for your painting and tyler what the hell's going on over there i'm just messing around you know i figured i'm going to be working digitally so i'm just going to mess around until something takes shape um, <laughs> so you... someone said uh, someone said something with wings so i was like okay I, I might do like a demon like creature um and we'll see did where it goes did someone say something with wings it, it, so yeah, you, while you were late yeah um, if you were here you would have <laughs> when you were late we were chatting in the chat i went into the yeah. chat to keep the morale up that wasn't to keep morale that was high. okay it, it had quite the opposite effect <laughs> um but since i'm just i'm just free flowing here digitally i may just scrap this i don't know if this is working for me yet I, um We'll see. We'll so, see. I may just, I may kill it. Tyler, I'm going to flip just, back and forth. Is this how your, just your doodles, just you start is you just draw blobs until you kind of see a shape coming out? Well, I see one in my head sort of, but, um, and so this is the, I think my favorite advantage of digital is I can start trying to find it. Like I have this, I have like a kind of a vision of what I want. So I'm just going to be scribbling until I see it starting to take shape. And then I can make all these adjustments and iterate. And um, I don't know. I'm just going to fully take advantage of the, of the digital aspect of this, the tools that are available to me. So basically, you don't know what you're doing. but No idea. Fine. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I have no idea. There's something there. I can kind of see it. Yeah. Um, and I'll flip, like you guys will see, I'll flip back and forth the whole bunch just to get a like see where I'm going. Is it is it right? Is it does this guy want to be like muscly? I'm kind of starting to feel some of the anatomy a little bit. So as I start like building the anatomy out, like I think he's hunched over here. Um as I start building that out, I'll probably flip it back and forth and like make sure I kind of draw things one side heavy. So I'll be flipping back and forth to make sure it's not like really wonky on one side. It's a great practice, right? I mean, it's like something I need to do more often than my my analog pieces. It's like maybe have a mirror, you know, a lot of artists have mirrors behind them uh, and we'll just kind of always take a look at uh, their piece in the mirror. Or I, I like to take photographs of my work and turn it upside down or flip it to see if it, there's any issues with it, you know? Um, but I, I do it so often in digital, I, I need to do it more often on in my traditional stuff. Yeah, that mirror technique is still something I will employ, but I just use my, I just use my phone, right? So I just turn the yeah. camera on and then I hold it up and the painting's behind me. 
and then I just do it that way. But um, but in school, yeah, we used to have all these little mirrors. Remember those little like handheld mirrors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, we were, we were rocking we were rocking everything. I was using black mirrors to to find value and black mirrors. Good job. Yeah. That's a good show. <laughs> Oh, okay, Black so, Mirror is a good show. <laughs> uh, great show. <laughs> oh, God. So I guess let me. Um, so Ray, you're kind of going. You, I saw you oil out there. You're going back in with. Um, yeah, yeah. With oils. Yep, yep. So I. Uh, so for those of you that uh, missed the last two episodes, uh, I've been doing this piece first with a gouache, a lift out uh, using gouache and um, lifting out my lights, and then. Um, I then came back over it opaquely uh, and um, transparently and you know uh, opaquely with um, acrylics. And now I am finishing off this piece. A live brush first, and I got to. Oh gotta, my god! I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I might. Hopefully, hopefully. You're gonna finish uh, this? I know. I'm, I'm gonna finish this. Um, so, those of you that I haven't seen, like I haven't been able to finish a piece on on camera because. I don't know why. Uh, I just like to try and race. And, be, and because I like society. I feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the man, the, the corporate the man. man is keeping us down. Yeah. So, you know, I, uh, I'm i going to try. So this is a, a rare third session, you know, uh, on on camera for us. We usually... Two weeks is is two episodes is usually what we devote to a given piece, and so uh, I uh, have we have a special third episode because of Lightbox. So the, if you're joining us from uh, the Lightbox crowd, welcome. Yeah, well. so good to have you. We had a great crowd um, uh, uh, yesterday. It was a lot of fun and uh, asked some really good questions, and I'm uh, looking forward to answering some awesome questions now. Uh, so. Anyways, I, I'm going back in with oils and I'm going to try and finish this up, basically. So uh, try as you might, sir. Yeah, try as it that might. Now I'm like, you know, uh, you know, it, this is the way I am. It's like, oh, what if I made it, you know, what if I just spent another hour on it and made it a little bit better, a little bit better, a little There's bit all, better. We can always spend more time on everything, always. I know. But eventually you got to ditch it, right? No. Yeah, you, have to, you just gotta throw it out, <laughs> and that's what this Tyler does every every piece. He just uh, it's off camera, but though, but he just throws his once he's done with the painting, he flings it across the the wall <laughs> to see if he could embed it into the drywall. You know, in yeah. his room. I like to test the drywall out, see how it yeah. holds up. <laughs> I'm just, I think I'm gonna go with like a really weird looking demon over here. Um, Dude, I've, I'm already seeing it, man. It's looking. Uh, his wings aren't nearly big enough, but we can adjust that stuff later. Uh, all right, I was gonna say that, but you know, <laughs> I thought I would let you say it. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, this is a thing that Kate and I joke about a lot, but I have this particular philosophy on wing design for creatures, and almost always, almost always, the wings are twenty percent too small on any creature that that you see the designs of or yeah like like the dragons in game of thrones eh, yeah. they could be about 20 percent bigger um it's just always it's almost always every once in a while they get it right it's i would say an endearing quirk <laughs> oh i was thank gonna you. say you you <laughs> must be a blast to watch <laughs> things like you'd be surprised maybe you wouldn't how many times we see dragons on on movies and tv and uh it's Every single time, it's like, here he goes. I know he's going to say it. <laughs> and there's about a three-second pause. He's like, wings are too small, but yeah, otherwise it's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool, but the wings are too small. Wait, so I just, you know what? You, Kate, you made me realize that I haven't watched anything with Tyler that contained dragons. Yeah. Oh, well, wow. you have something to be grateful for. Hey, here's a yeah. question from the chat. Uh, MVP Nito underscore Re. On the topic of finishing works, I would love to hear you guys' experience with that. Do you have a bunch of work in progress pieces going at once? How do you deal with giving yourself timelines for projects? Great question. Yeah. 
Oh, I don't want to zoom out. Um, I mean, my I, my timelines are the deadlines that I have for stuff. I really haven't done any personal stuff in, in forever, um, which is a shameful thing to say, but it's true. Um, so yeah, my 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 deadlines are are the deadlines given to me by the art directors I'm working with. Um, but I, I do take maybe two or three projects on at a time, so I end up just juggling them around. I fatigue on one piece and then I'll switch uh, to the next one. And if I'm working in oils, then I just kind of clear the palette and switch to the new color setup or whatever piece I'm working on. Um, and juggling back and forth like that helps me keep fresh eyes. Yeah, that's a that's a great way of handling multiple pieces for sure. Uh, I I tend to start a lot of pieces and then um, tend to finish them off uh, one one on one. So I start a ton of them where I basically just draw everything out and then um, I focus on a piece as long as I can and then um, uh, usually it's to a finish. But if a piece gets to a point where I'm just, I don't know what to do to it. I'll just put it to the side. Uh, but usually I have a debt, like a gallery deadline uh, where I, it's it's a little bit different from illustration deadlines. Uh, maybe maybe short-term to medium-term project uh, deadlines, uh, different from that. But like in terms of a long-term, since like a show is like a long-term project, I, I have to tell myself, okay, I need to be past, the, you know, X point. Uh, uh, before this date in order for me to be on time because I have a, a certain clip, you know, at which I go like I, I can fi finish a piece, of, you know, uh, about once a week, you know, um, I'll need a week to, to paint something that's complicated or uh, and so I'll I can gauge how fast I, I go but it's, you know, it's a, a great way of just giving yourself deadlines too is a great way of finishing pieces because Again, this show is, is a great example. It's like, I'll work on a piece indefinitely if I'm, you know, uh, if I'm giving time, but this helps me, you know, say, okay, Ray, you've got to finish this piece in this episode. And even if you don't come, you know, uh, to finishing it, you're at least close enough that that's the, uh, that you can, you know, what you need to do in order to finish it off. Yeah, and I think I, I work similarly, right? Like I, I have to, I have to plan, like I do have the deadline for when the piece is finished or when I need to sketch in. So I have to kind of juggle those. Um, like Ray was saying, like, I'm like, I have to be at this stage here if I'm gonna get this in um, on time. And, you know, I've been late here and there. Um, it's not good to um, make practice out of that, but um, it's sort of, I would have to say like, Ray, you probably can't be late on a no. gallery at all. No. Um, and there's like a drop dead date for, you know, illustration that you can't go beyond that. Um, so it's always good to keep, keep yourself on time at all times. I mean, I could sneak in the back of the gallery, like during the show and place things up. Yeah. I just kind of throw it on the, like, while they're not looking. It was here the whole time. What are you talking about? Yeah, I wasn't late. <laughs> You're was, late. They're like, Ray, that we don't even have a show right now. We canceled it. Why are you here? <laughs> hey question from aaron rufino what's up aaron, aaron. aaron you guys win the lottery and get to build your dream studio space what would it look oh. like i would have murals of all the dragons of game of thrones in all of my favorite places because oh, i think they're perfectly designed really small mm -hmm. wings though like yeah, i would, I would make them small. like 15 yeah, percent really. smaller and then invite yeah Tyler. so i could yeah so i could fit more dragons that's even oh that's <laughs> Yes. Oh, okay, you know what? Let me roll this back just a smidge. I take it no, back on the Game forward. of Thrones dragons because those are pretty good. <laughs> what about right. what about what about Smaug in uh, in the Hobbit? What do you think? Oh man, that was perfect. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the Hobbit movies, but Smog was really good, and his wingspan was enormous. Do you think they should have spent less time on Smog and more time on the rest of the movie? No, no. The whole movie could have just been smog. People would have been like, it wasn't really about The Hobbit, but it's cool. That's what happens when you get your wish, Tyler. You see what you did to The Hobbit? 
So what, what would you, what would your dream studio be? Uh, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm back on target. Um, <laughs> back to actually answering Aaron's question. Let me answer, let me answer the question. <laughs> Man, this is something I've thought about a lot. Okay, really high ceilings is what I want um, so that I can have like a proper light set up. Right now, I just have lights like hammered into the wall. Um, so that would be number one. Um, wait, did you, Ray, did you talk about yours or am I just going? Am I going? No, yeah, you're going. You're going. Okay. Um, I would have, I'd sort of have, like right right now I have a small space. So I have like a digital section in the corner that I'm sitting in. And then as you can see, you can see me in my little tiny box. Behind me over here is where I have my oil painting set up. Um, so in I an ideal studio, I have like a really huge wide space with like big flat tables in the middle so that I can prep canvases and prints. Um, and then on the side, I would like to, I'd love to have like a wall mounted easel with all kinds of um, different slots in it. So I can have a whole bunch of paintings up on the wall at once um, with a better light array so that they're all kind of filled in with good light. And what else would I want? I don't know. I'd love, I really want to do more sculpting. So I'd love to have like a sculpting um, area. But yeah, what about you, Ray? Uh, I would like, I, you know, I really want to get into sculpting and like model building. Mm -hmm. That's something I've always wanted to do. And I just, so I would have a space for that, you know? Yeah, like maquettes and like uh, reference building. Yeah, totally, man. I would love to do that stuff. That'd be like sweet. Um, I would have definitely a place where I could uh, just photograph my work. I would have a place where I would mount all of my work because like, I mount stuff on, uh, mount drawings on, uh, a wood panel that's uh uh that's what i've been doing um so if, if you've ever seen uh if you saw the two episodes ago i kind of explained what how i did that but uh, if you look at donato giacola's work who who i think donato is doing light boxes here um you can that's pretty much how he does his stuff um and um yeah i would uh have uh like a my digital studio built into my traditional studio and I would have uh, high ceilings because I would want to do larger pieces, you know? Um, yeah, I get that, get that good giant tall space, man. That's what I want to. Yeah, man, that'd be sick. Um, well, here's, I, I got a question for you though on, on your on your dream setup. No, we're moving up, we're moving over. Aaron asked <laughs> ask the question, not you. No, no okay. I'll let you finish, no. but then I, then I have a question I wanted to yeah, ask. Yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? Sorry. Well, so you want to have a, this is something I've debated in my head as well um i i would like a, a dedicated space to photograph stuff yeah but but my my issue with that is now that i have you know now that howard has set me up with all the really cool lights howard um, like the the film and the um and the polarizer i i would like i just want to have a clear enough space around my canvas that i can just photograph my canvas or whatever painting I painted on the the on the easel, right okay. in the same in the same exact lighting conditions that I painted it in. Because I right. fear like if I pull it out of that space now, I'm going to pull it into a new lighting condition and have to do a whole bunch of adjustments digitally. So I don't know. I don't, what do you think? I mean, do you want to have like a do you want to have like a fully separate space to photograph your work, or do you want to build it uh, around? I, I do only so that I can, I don't have to take a piece off of the easel in order to photograph another piece because I have to move oh, my, good point. Good point. my lights you know, uh, over to a, another separate area of my studio because of the way it's set up. So uh, I, I just find that that would be a little bit easier for me uh, to do. And plus, you know, it'll look, you know, it just looks different. Everything looks different. When uh, you just want to get as close, I try to get as close as possible what I can see with my eye. But uh, because you know when you when it hangs in the gallery, it looks you know uh, different. It doesn't look exactly the same. You know, even though I try and re recreate that as closely as possible in the studio. So yeah, it's a, uh, there's always like you're gonna run into different kinds of lights. Yeah, yeah. but are, you bring up you know, a good point though about that. You do. You bring up a good point. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, uh, you finally appreciate it. Tears me questions. apart to, to, to agree. <laughs> no, it wasn't your question. It was you were piggybacking <laughs> on Aaron, and now you're taking Aaron's credit. No, I just want to say that I thought I came up with a really good question. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. No, thank you, Aaron. It was great. Um, <laughs> hopefully, we answered it somewhat. It's like every artist's dream space is a little different, but I cut Ray off. He had more to say. Go for it. I'd have a sweet ass computer. I mean, like, oh, yeah. And like the the best largest Cintiq that I could ever. And then uh, I, I was going to say, one. I, I was going to say, I I would have. You know what I would do if I because I had I won the lottery. I would just have a sweet lighting setup, and just have it duplicated in an area that I was going to shoot my photo reference with. You know? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I was like, I guess I could just create the space and make it identical lighting wise. It's by the same lights, by the same intensity, um, all the same settings. Oh, and storage, 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 like a ton of storage space so I can store my panels and other paintings. So they're not like in boxes. I did this myself. Um, and I got, I got, I got to thank um, my friend, Chris Ron for even suggestions um, as to this, because he's, run into storage issues as well. And he got this giant rack that's just for, um, you know, uh, storing um, silk screens for silk screen. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Print silk, making, silk print yeah, print yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So you can put them on there and it's just about the size of most of the paintings that him and I do for magic. And they can just sit on there and dry and you can light it because um, he's been running into some yellowing issues, you know, where you um, it's been in the dark for too long, um, right. so which you can fix by just lighting the piece with normal light again, and it tends right. to um, remove that yellowing. But but you know you I, you just don't want to store your stuff in like the darkness. Right. I got another question from Chappie McChackman. Two questions right. from Chappie actually. The first one is, how often, if ever, do you guys paint in the field? Do you paint on vacation? Oh, you know. <laughs> I hate to say it. I, I don't paint on vacation. Um, I have on some camping trips, but I tend to, when I'm on vacation, like I, I just want to relax and not think about work. And I'll bring a sketchbook sometimes and do like little sketches, but you always I'm bring your to, iPad too. Yeah. I just kind of mess around with stuff as opposed to like making something finished. Um, Cause I just want to get away from the work side of it. Uh, I uh, used to religiously bring my like little sketching easel, like my Peshad box mm -hmm. to camping trips, but it's hard being, it's hard painting when with people who aren't, uh, with non-artists, you know, who, who aren't painting because they don't understand, like I've got to stay there for three hours and paint a piece. They usually are like moving, doing X, Y, and Z. And, you know, right. it's uh, so I, since haven't done that i've pretty much done i brought my ipad and i've painted on um if i'm outside outdoors i'm i'm painting i'll try and paint a quick still life just for fun now if i'm traveling and uh, i'm at a museum uh yes i will bring my my sketchbook or my ipad to to paint from like cast painting uh casts or or do master studies like i love doing that stuff so um, oh man well, make me look like a lazy artist, damn it. Well, there um, you go. I don't know, you know, to be honest, and we've had, I think we've, I don't know if we've had him in here, but um, we've had, we may have had James Gurney in here once. And like I've said in the past, I don't know how the guy does it. He's, he's always painting drawing all the time. stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's painting all the time. I'm just, I gotta, I don't know. I don't know, I have a hard time doing that. No, oh, man. I mean, I, I uh, uh, you know, I've had, I, I've actually gotten better at it where I've, I've been painting less and less when I'm, I'm on vacation just because I want to enjoy stuff. It's got to be definitely something that's separate from my actual work though. Like I can't be thinking about it as a piece that I want to hang in a gallery and or thinking about it for a show or anything like that. It's sure. got to be something that's fun because otherwise it just, you know, it just gets wrecked, you know. I also need as much help as I can get. So, you know, I'm like praying to the art gods to help me, you know, cause I'm- Yeah, dude, like, you're not, you're not very good. So- No, you gotta, no, um, not at all. This is all black magic and terrible. sacrifices and like, you know. 
Tyler, so I, it's mean when you dunk on Ray. It's fi it's fine when Ray dunks on you and when I dunk on either of you, <laughs> but you're not allowed to dunk on either of us. Hey, All right, second, fine. second question from Chappie McChackman. If you did have time to do a personal piece, what would it be? Oh, man, I got a huge list of stuff. It's... I got all these like Lord of the Rings illustrations I'd love to do one day because like Lord of the Rings is sort of a big, I don't know, part of my upbringing, I guess. I read it a lot as a kid. And I have like particular like ideas of what I think certain things look like. And I'd love to play around with those. Um, there's some <laughs> properties that Kate and I have kind of thought of. Some wingspans to design and, you know. Yeah adjust or fix you know what i mean adjust. <laughs> yeah what about you ray uh well i'm i'm basically doing my personal work is for you know for my gallery so um so i'm, I'm doing that you know and uh but I, I i do have a piece that like I'll, I'll usually start a piece or start a painting that's outside of like what i'm normally doing like uh and so uh for instance like i I'll start like a, if I'm doing a lot of still life, I'll, I'll start like a portrait or a landscape, you know, and just to have it, maybe I won't get to it, but um, I'll, uh, you know, immediately I'll still kind of work on it here and there and it might turn into something uh, really nice. So I always have pieces going, like I have so many pieces. Uh, I think about it, I do work on like multiple pieces at the same time because I'm always making I'll, I'll get to a point where i'm making new pieces all the time like getting new references set up and thinking about sizes and then doing the drawings for them and like and so um yeah do you bring a lot of those to final like these the ones that you kind of are seeing as side projects or are they just flow because my the reason why i ask this is i do have all these like side projects i want to do but they're all just like tiny super rough like Photoshop digital sketches, and then they're just yeah. sitting in a folder that I, I've never really taken them any further. So some of them are, I, so what I do is I, uh, if I'm worried that that's gonna happen, I rush to get it mounted onto a panel. So, and, oh, okay, so you're like committed. Yeah, so I'm like, so I have a, a portrait that I'm working on right now that I, that's been sitting for months on, on my wall, unfinished, but it's because I haven't gotten to it yet, but it's always there reminding me like, hey, you are unfinished and, mm -hmm. Uh, this is, this could be a lot of fun and you were really excited once about it. And so why don't you, whenever you have time, just come on over. I mean, that's a good practice. Like constantly, I think it's so easy for me to lose the, the ideas that I had in folders because they're not sitting right. in front of me. Right. Um, right. And maybe I'll try that. Like I'll try and, uh, print them out just to, and like have them on the wall so that they're a reminder, like you should finish this thing. And, that, and that's something I do like when I'm on, you know, if I'm in a place like if I'm camping or something like that and I have some time to myself, I'll, I'll just work on it just for a little bit. It doesn't, if it's five minutes, it's cool. You know, it's five minutes more than I, I have spent, you know, working on it than not. Right. And so, yeah. uh, so I just work on it little by little and it, it just makes me feel good that I'm like, you know, exploring that option and not limiting myself, you know, um, so yeah that makes sense but it's different though i mean we, we have different types of careers too you know I, sure sure I have a, but go ahead kate sorry i have another question from lord adornable hmm. here we go question to tyler when starting a bigger digital piece do you use the method you're using right now or do you take a different approach uh, i take a different approach like if this is more like if i was doing um if i was working on like um you know a magic when I work on magic, we do these concept pushes every once in a while. They're like little sprints where we try and crank out a whole bunch of concepts for an upcoming set in about three weeks. This right. is how I would kind of approach that. Um, I just start doodling. And then if, if this idea was working and I showed it to the art director who's leading the push, we would maybe pursue it further if it was all right. Um, or make adjustments. Um, but if I'm doing an illustration, it's it's a completely different start. Like I'm usually, you know, I'll create another layer. Like usually I start with, if I'm doing an illustration, it's like I start with a little thumbnail box like this. And up in here, I'll, I'll start messing with a composition uh, with just values and really tiny to try and figure out uh, if this is gonna work. 
and um, that from that I'll start building an illustration. But this is completely different. This is more like creature creature design kind of stuff. How's it going over there, Ray? It's going all right. I'm just trying to find some reference. Some reference. Yeah, I know. I don't know what the hell I'm doing right now. So to help the Scott, this isn't a question, but uh, to help the Tell the Scott says, "Oh damn, I want to see Ty Tyler's Balrog." Oh yeah, I, I have this. Right yeah, but you know, this is a the cliche like Balrog. If there's a Balrog, because I love what they did in the in the movies. Um, the, what I did with the Balrog, he's like this. He's like an actual monster. Um, but there's this. I don't know the way Tolkien describes him. Like he's like a shadow. So this has no form. I would love to try to. I've, I've I've tried a bunch of times to actually like visualize what I think it could possibly be, um, but I'm not. I'm. I just can't do it now. <laughs> Here's a question from Evacuate. What is the goofiest or most just for fun project you've ever done? Did it see the light of day, or was it just for your amusement? Uh, I did a, a logo for a dry cleaning company, uh, and uh, yeah, it was like it was a design to go on the side of a uh, of the dry cleaning trucks, and it was it was silly. It was a crazy project that I don't even know. I've seen the light of day, so I, I don't know the the second. I don't know the answer to the second part, but it was. <laughs> No one will ever see it, you know. Uh, Sometimes you never know. You, you never know. You never know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I I hope. I hope I know. Yeah. I mean, I think. Um, I think mine, mine, mine's actually kind of behind me on the wall there. It was. It, it saw the light today. It was um, a movie poster for a Bollywood film. Oh yeah. So I always that have was, it. I always have it on the wall because it's just, it's so silly. You can't really um, see it. You should go grab it. Oh, yeah. I'll make your camera real big so they can see it. It's, um, just, yeah, that you, know, nice. you know how Bollywood movies are. They're just so much fun. So I, lower, lower. Right there. So yeah, it's, um, this is so guy, absolutely one of my favorite pieces that you've ever done. Yeah, it was so much fun. And it's one of those, like, honestly, I almost didn't have to do much because the, the Bollywood film studio had all this super high res reference of all these guys. So I just kind of like mocked them up together in Photoshop and was like, is this what you want? And they're like, yeah, cool. And then I just used that as my, um, like used all that reference to create like a tight drawing, almost like you'd see like a Struson drawing. And then, um, and then I could just I painted it in Photoshop. So um, it was just it was more of a design challenge, you know. Like Ray, you know, like how like Black, Thomas Blackshear talks about like he just he's designing everything as opposed yeah, to like totally. painting anything. Yeah, so yeah. So that yeah. that was um that was like more just of a design challenge, and I had I had a super fun time with that one. Yeah, you won best in show in the Society of Illustrators LA with that thing. Oh shoot, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, we, that was such you won an award on that too. I won two medals. Okay, I didn't yeah. win best in show. <laughs> Jeez. Well, all I remember is we went down there and had a way to help me with the alley oop. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was my one regret is not going up to Sid Mead. Sid Mead came to the show. Oh yeah. Yeah, like a white, just a just a white suit. Head to toe. And it Rock came. Star. And uh for those of you who don't know, Sid Mead is he's a legendary uh industrial uh designer and concept artist. Uh, he did Blade Runner and he did a billion other things. And um he uh was at the show and he sat down in this couch and I was like, that's Sid Mead. And he's like, I don't, and you know, I was like, we should go over. And I was like, I, and you had said, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I don't, 
And I was like, yeah, I don't know either. And I got nervous. And so I was the like, we'll, we'll go over later. We'll go over later. We'll go over later. We'll go over later. You know, I feel but, like if Joe Johnston was sitting in, in a, just hanging out in a room with us, I wouldn't run over there. I'd be too afraid. Yeah. So, but I got to do that. I got to do, I should have done that. But we did end up meeting like Bill Perkins, who I'm a huge fan of, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, Robert Barrett. Uh, but Bill Perkins, another legend in, in uh, visual development in pre predominantly like uh, particularly animation. Poof, man, that guy's so good. Yes. Great. Everyone look him up if you get a chance. Yeah. Yeah. From Sarah Grice, 213. Is there a technique slash style you've been wanting to try slash learn? Oh, wow. Yeah. I like that. Um, I've fooled like around question. with it a few times. Yeah, this is an awesome question because I've, I've had one opportunity to use it and I'd like to try it again. Um, but it's that, like what I've just mentioned. Um, well, I mean, maybe that Bollywood poster was kind of in close to that, but it's that Shrewson style of of drawing and um i've only tried to do it digitally i'd love i'd love to try and do it physically um because i did a dragon heist poster for D, &D that i'd kind of made like a struce and style uh, movie poster so i would like to do one of those in the, with the actual airbrush and prisma colors that struce and would have used yeah so you're washing a uh, color in with airbrush and you're basically building up lights and uh, other subtleties with uh, Prismacolor pencils. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. I wouldn't mind sculpting and I wouldn't mind, uh, um, I wouldn't mind doing everything. I mean, I, I, with me, I started painting differently every single time. So like, I, cause I, I don't, I just get bored so quickly. So I, love uh just experimenting with stuff so uh if i get an opportunity to do it uh, i'll i'll just go ahead and do it you know um uh, so that's true and when i did a lot of like mixed media drawings to uh to use as like uh to for studies and then uh i so i did those like i wanted to do juice juice and stuff so i brought an airbrush brush and i just did mixed media value studies with them and um that's that was like my excuse of about how to go about doing it and uh so i get obsessive uh like pretty pretty quickly um, i'm, which I'm the same though like in, when it comes to not doing a piece the same way I'm yeah very yeah much the same. totally but you're you're a little bit more limited because uh, you're you're doing a lot of illustration work so i mean it's like right you know, right uh, so you know when i was doing a ton of illustration work i uh, you know i would always have a piece off to the side where i was experimenting but you know i could never it would always kind of lay there, you know, semi unfinished because I wouldn't be able to integrate it necessarily as a, it's, you know, whole hog into a, into a piece because some of it had to be digital, you know? Sure. And, and yeah, and, and I do start stuff differently every time, but I end up having to, I get to the same sort of look by the right. end. Cause I can't, right. I can't like experiment stylistically cause I am, you know, I'm, I can't surprise the art director like that. Like, oh, you sent in a super stylized piece. That's weird. We weren't expecting that. You know, I, so you can't Tyler, do we, that. We got a statue in clay and like Play-Doh. <laughs> For this card art, it's it's weird. Um, it's I don't weird. know if we like it. It's it's not exactly what you sent as a sketch, <laughs> but uh, yeah, give us a call back. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we need a chat. Um, your future. future. Oh God. Yeah. From Chappy McChapman, what is it about sculpture that interests you? What kinds of sculptures? Oh, uh, I think like the, the being able to make something three dimensionally, you know, and uh, is is incredible. And I've always loved like the artists like in the nineteenth century or like uh, that have done like these huge incredible uh figurative uh, sculptures like in the france and like if you look if you go to the um the parthenon in france you could see that you could do like uh the louvre or the mat and uh a lot of turn of the century artists would i just lo love at that wonderful style of uh sculpting the figure um and also i like um you know i've always loved like 
the uh, like the idea of building maquettes, like you know, special effects and stuff like that. And um, Thomas Blackshear, we sometimes talk about. Um, yeah, who's who's this guy? He sounds like he's pretty good, but go on. We'd also use it as like uh, a way of building his reference and like, you know, artists in the past have been sculpture, use sculpture, build sculptures as maquettes. James Gurney, uh, who, uh, you know, uh, may or may not be, uh, have uh, stopped by our, uh, our, our stream. Uh, he does that, you know, uh, to aid in, in creating a painting. And I just love the idea of like creating something out of like nothing, like a rudimentary, just, just making something, you know, uh, out of like materials that really necessarily weren't designed, it wasn't designed for. So I, I think that it just seems like fun to me, you know, I like building mm -hmm. reference, so. Yeah, I've, um, I had such a good time when we were at the Academy, I took that Ec Rocher class. Yeah, it's one class I really wish I would have been able to take. Yeah, it was so much fun that I, I've been in love with sculpture ever since. I've just never really had the opportunity to do too much of it. I, I'll mess around in ZBrush and stuff, but um, I really want to dig into doing more sculpture work. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go find this reference really quick. I have no idea where I put it. So I'm trying to deal with this, uh, the sunlit figures. And I need the reference in order to do that because I have this reference, separate reference that I have of the, these figures being sunlit and I want to kind of copy those, use that, the color, uh, the intensity of the color and how the light halos around them, that effect. And I want to put that in here. Uh, and I, cause I think I'm, I'm starting to uh, uh, zoom in or, or focus on my focal points a little bit more. And I want to see how right. much I need to build up. Um, so you, you're talking about that sort of glare like yeah, back, yeah, yeah. Glare. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I'm gonna see if I can find that reference. I thought I had it with me. So no, F in the chat, I think Ray's not prepared. <laughs> well, Tyler, you just did one of my favorite parts whenever you're painting a monster, which is the eyeballs. I didn't get to see you actually paint them in. I was looking at something. Oh else, yeah. But, but when they start when the eyes have that unnatural glow. I love how you you always reserve your brightest whites for like that spot, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do because it's a light source. So when you're looking directly at a light source, I, at least a portion of it is going to go almost to white. I'm not at, I'm not at 100 percent white though. Like if I sample this, I'm about what am I at? I'm at 72 percent. So um, like a full 100 percent white. Let's see what the dogs think about this. It's mail. It's mailman time. Oh yeah. I gotta it's go. Just I gotta gonna... go tell Frodo to look out the door because there's nobody there. Right back. This is this is kind of how we get Frodo to stop. Um, is we gotta, like show him, we show him what's going on, and he's like, oh, okay. There's nothing out there. I can be chill. Um, because he's you know, he's kind of a dumb dumb. I think Frodo just, just doesn't like your answer, Tyler. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's a he's a real critic, that Frodo. We have um. We had a, a horrible incident this morning with my terrible dog, and poor Frodo, and. Oh no. It happens every once in a while. Arya will attack him brutally for no reason, and he was screaming and. Um. I don't know. We, we got to do some do something with Arya. We're gonna be looking at some really intense training programs for her. She's hey, so aggressive. We've got Izzy Madrano in the chat right now, guys. Hey, Izzy. Izzy. Welcome. Yeah, we're welcome. Doodling. We're doodling and stuff. Well, I'm creating artwork. Ray's How creating a, a masterwork. I am. I don't know what I'm doing. This demon's head's too big. I gotta. All right, here we go. We can do some Photoshop magic, everybody. Maybe if you think the head's too big or the wings are too small. Um, that or the body is too small. So we're going to make an adjustment here. Okay, here's a question from Bonks1. A question for Tyler. When designing the color for creatures that are a different color than humans, how do you go about painting and getting the reference to know what color to paint? Um. 
Yeah, awesome question. It, it's all about, that's an interesting one. Cause like, if it's not, for me, I think about like, what color is their blood? That's where I start. <laughs> um, so if they have red blood and they're like a blue creature, they're still gonna have the pinks in all the areas that humans have pinks. You know, we have pinks in our noses and our cheeks, wherever our, thin, wherever our skin is thin. Um, that, so I, I maintain that level. But if, if I say like, oh, the creature has green blood, then you're gonna wanna take all those areas that would normally be pink and try and push them towards a green. Um, so that, that's kind of how I approach the, the color stuff. Um, it's like, first and foremost, what, what color is their blood? Which is a weird thing to think about, I guess. But it's creatures. So. Um, but yeah, that, that's mostly how I do it. And I, I try to get the same value transitions that you would get on a regular human. So, you know, there's certain areas that are lighter than others. You know, the, like, if you look at old timey photos, there's, um, there's always people that have like really pale foreheads from wearing a hat all the time. Um, so that's kind of like an interesting transition to play with, like where, where are they? Um, I'll do it on this demon, but, but it's like, where are they getting the most sun on them and where are they not? So if this guy has, let's say he's getting a lot of sun on his back and shoulders, top of his head and everything, that'll be the dark stuff. And then the, the chest area, like the belly area will be lighter. So I'm going to use an overlay layer and try and lighten it. So I'm, I'm, I'm addressing value first before I really go into the colors. We can keep playing with this and I'll show you how I transition. But yeah, um, what, what do you do, Ray? Uh, same same thing. I mean, I, I, I think about like, you know, you you just think about what the, the structure, the, the, the values are gonna remain the same, right? So if you're changing the, so the form doesn't really necessarily matter, but when you're so when you're designing a uh, let's just say a red dragon or something, you know from from the the base or like maybe maybe it's like something simple as like okay I got a green shirt but I would rather have a red shirt. Um, you think about the color. I tend to think about the color in the light side and color in the shadow side or the temperature of the light, and think about how that affects both of the the. The colors. So they're like, for instance, right in here, I'm I'm using other reference, and this is a, a, a thing that I actually, uh, you know, saw other other artists do is I use references of things that are pretty close to what it is that I want, or you know, as close as possible. So I have this like reference of this uh, uh, this sunlight coming through these figures, and they're not the same figures that I'm painting, but I'm gonna copy. I want to get that same effect, so I'm gonna use that those those colors to change the color that i have here uh in order to get the effect that i'm looking for so um it, it's always important for us to to look at your you know what like what tyler and i'm sure tyler would agree like focus on your values first get those together and then like use color as almost like a different set of problems and separate it uh, right and then just get and like what Tyler was talking about, like, you know, what, what's the color of the blood and like, you know, study, study human beings and like, you know, look, look for the natural uh, changes in, uh, in the face, which there, there are many like color zones based off of what, whether you have oxygenated or deoxygenated blood showing on the surface. Uh, and then uh, find the pattern in it. And then you can change the color based off of you know, what you know about this. So that's why he was saying the blood, you know, if the blood's green, then where in a human being, there would be red popping up in specific places, it'd be green, you know, yeah. and, and so on and so forth. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. I mean, it's just studying nature too. Like, I mean. Yeah, there's so much that nature will inform you with when it comes to this stuff. I mean, it's, it is hard to imagine like a, a blue blood and what it would, how it would affect the skin tone because you know, there's no examples of blue blooded creatures, but um, you can always just cheat it as well. But it's, it's just a, it's fun to mess around with that. Like try to like observe a human face in all the pink areas. And that's where you're seeing the red blood um, and then try and 
replace all those with a different color and see what it looks like. See if it's interesting. I thought you were going to say like, it's hard to see where, you know, people that have like purple blood, but I was like, all you have to do is just look at Klingons and well, you obviously, see it. yeah, and then you see it and it's, it's clearly okay. illustrated. That's all the reference it's, you need. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Bonks's next question is what color is the blood of this demon, Tyler? Oh, no, now, I, you, I now, you, now you got to answer. Now you got to answer. So I'm going to, because I haven't gotten there yet, but what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to give this guy a, a glow from within. Um, so I want him to be somewhat dark overall so that I can have the glow, the glow come through and it's going to be a hot glow. Like he's burning on the inside. Um, and so with that effect, I'm going to be playing a lot with subsurface scattering, like how light becomes redder when it's passing through membranes and thin skin and stuff like that. So it's almost like a good reference for this would be looking at like a hot piece of metal and a forge or something, um, especially like a complicated object that's being heated. So if you ever, if you ever worked with ceramics or looked into um, a, inside of a kiln while things are hot in there, you see that it's like the deepest parts of the object are the brightest. Um, so it's almost a negative of the object. So um, I'm going to try and play with that on this guy, maybe just like on the belly area or something like this fire inside of him. So his, his blood's going to actually be a light source, which would be interesting. Wade so basically, totally dodged the question. Yeah, basically, Tyler oh, doesn't know. It's orange. <laughs> orange blood. <laughs> That's all you had to say. Yeah. <laughs> Long answer, but I don't even know how to get to that at this point. Maybe I should jump in and start getting there. I was fooling around with if I'm going to rim light this guy because this, everyone does rim lights. Maybe I will just a little bit in the head. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think the question should be why are why aren't you rim lighting it? Because right. I wanted I wanted to um, I wanted to not. So here's the thing. I like rim lighting. I love it. But sometimes it's just an easy way to pop an image. And Excuse I always find you. It, I find it's like, you know, maybe it's maybe it's more of a challenge to try and not rim light the thing, like to try and spotlight it or I don't know. I think it's a requirement for awesome, all things awesome. It's true. Nice hot light around everything always makes it look cool. I've definitely heard you say that as a critique on people's portfolios, um, like at Likebox last year when uh, there's just too, there's such a thing as too much rim lighting, right? How do you know when you've gone too far? Right, um, so, um, well, Ray, Ray's probably got an answer for this too, but um, I yeah, also have an answer, go. I was totally gonna derail the conversation and say like, if you think you, you've you gone too far, you haven't gone far enough, but. <laughs> <laughs> you've gotta go farther. Farther, um, no, or go, further. go ahead, Tyler. Um, actually, not... actually answer the question. So uh, this has come up a lot in, um, portfolios that I've seen and it is it is when I say like oh you've gone too far with the rim lighting it's it's usually for this reason it's usually they have in this area of their piece or whatever they have like a really bright light right so it's fully lit and then on the rim light they have just as bright of a light and so what that does is it flattens out the form quite a bit um so what like what why I'm doing it differently here is I have a the brightest light is going to be this rim light. It's going to be really bright, like carving an edge over all this um, topography on his face. But over here, it's not as bright. It's um, so I picked the brightest source, and I've, I've always I always tell students that, that come up and for portfolio reviews to do that too. Either your rim light's brighter than your main light, or your main light's brighter than your rim light. Um, you got to sort of pick pick one because if they're competing. Um, then you're going to um, flatten out the form, and that'll be a problem. Chappie McChapman has noted that it does look like these two are having a pretty epic stare down. <laughs> the way that the pages oh. are oriented on the stream, it looks like oh, they're just staring down I, Wyatt Earp. I can't yes. see it, but that sounds awesome. So I will do a little bit of rim lighting. Your move, demon. And hell's coming with me. Yeah. And they, oh, there it is. Is. oh my god, there it is. <laughs> Full circle. 
why it's like you might get me in a fight, but not before I turn your head into a canoe. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I picked a really bright rim light on this um, so that it doesn't compete with this main light source that I have going over here. I'm sure there are terms for all of this. But... Can I just say I love Tombstone? We should watch it on the stream. Don't <laughs> don't tell me that you're falling in love with this painting and that you're not willing to sell it. <laughs> because... you know, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't you do dare. Not, don't do that to me. You bring up a great point, Kate. Sometimes, sometimes you don't have to sell a piece. <laughs> sometimes you keep them and sometimes because you, you really them. like them. There's a there's a future piece of Tyler's that we can't talk about that I've already laid claim to, um, and I'm going to trot it out every single chance I get, and I haven't even yeah. I don't even know what it looks like yet. She's trying to take it ahead of time, everybody. Yeah, he hasn't added your horse yet. Evacuate is right. I can't wait to find out. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, how's Ever that gonna look when you do that, right? We need to pump. No, what? Well, uh, where's where's Howard? <laughs> Howard's not here. Howard's no. not yeah, Howard's here. abandoned us. He's, he's he's lost this bidding war. Yeah, he's lost the bidding war. Ooh, oh my gosh, really good question. Tyler's going to be so excited because this question is about edge control. Oh, yeah. If you need a topic to talk about, I would love to. It's from Nito underscore Re, um, VIP. We, I would love to hear your thoughts on edges in painting and when to choose between soft, hard, lost, etc. I mean, this is a great topic, and Ray and I, I think, have talked about it at great length um but i have a particular philosophy on this um i don't know if there's a right we or love wrong. talking about it yeah we love talking about it. Yeah. um i don't have a right or wrong answer or like i don't i don't think there's a right or wrong answer to what you're doing with edges is correct but i think what this is my view on it is how you handle edges ends up being your style um your style of mark making it, it evolves out of how you handle edges um I mean, there are obviously like rules to like when edges should be soft and when they should be hard, but everyone's approach to how they make those marks, how they inform or how they use their mark making abilities to describe an edge uh, becomes their style. I don't know. Do you agree? You think I'm full, full shit, right? <laughs> That's two separate questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just, you know, let's focus on answering one question, Tyler. Okay, we've had an issue this stream where we're, we're going off on tangents because we never do this. We're always like right on point with that. Yeah, answer. we're always answering the questions directly. Yeah, so edge control, it, you know, like when it comes to the edge of form, uh, you know, yeah, I, I totally agree. Like it, it all depends, you know, when it comes to I mean, when it comes to edges, like how you handle it in terms of a picture's structure, you know, uh, I think it's definitely something that's like part of someone's unique mark. Uh, when it comes to something like um, the edge of form and how to handle, to create the illusion of three dimensions on a two dimensional surface, um, if you wanna make something feel like light is hitting it, uh, you've got to differentiate the edges of your form and cast shadows. Um, and so just on like a fundamental level where, you know, form shadows uh, are uh, a result of the object turning away from the light. They're, that's how they're created. So they're going to have um, a gradual or softer edge. And then the cast shadows are a result of the object intercepting the light and which causes it to cast its shadow uh, or a silhouette onto an adjacent form. So that's happening right here with this uh, white herbs like uh, chin is casting a shadow onto his neck right here. So that's going to be a hard edge. Uh, so you want all of your form shadows to be soft and your cast shadows to be hard uh, in, in that kind of relationship. So um, that that comes more in, in line with like if you're dealing when you're dealing with like a direct light source. So is that I don't know. Did I answer that question right, Tyler? Oh, yeah. I mean, it makes total sense. And, and yeah. if that that itself is relative to the other like the hardness of forms around it right so it's like right. if you you know if you have like a giant building and it's casting a, a, a shadow onto a character like 
you know, maybe across their face, but it's a giant building. So it's not going to be a super hard shadow. It's actually going to be a soft transition because the, right. the light's getting diffused. Um, so that's like relative. The building's shadow is still going to be hard the farther away you get from the building. Right. Um, but it, so playing around with that, like knowing, understanding those principles of like how a shadow will be hard when it's cast and how it's going to be soft when it transitions and playing with the, um, the distance that you're going to get. Um, is super fun. Like I love playing with that. To, um, to like, like for example, like um, if a sh the longer the shadow gets from what's casting it, the softer the edge gets. Um, and so you can like play with that that transition, um, and you get like weird diffused light and like hot light on that edge. And th there's just um, super fun things to play with when it comes to those concepts. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of this stuff, like the form shadow soft, cast shadow hard, you know, is applicable to kind of most things that are fairly close to you when you start getting into large distances like miles and miles away you know like or large objects like buildings you you get you get those differences uh, occurring because the, the light has to travel the cast shadow has to travel a far distance uh to in order to hit that person so if you have the cast shadow of, some, uh, of a building over something of someone who's sitting on i don't know uh in the street and it's a skyscraper that's going to be you know it's a considerable amount of distance it takes to, to cast it so it'll be really sharp next to adjacent buildings but the longer it travels the more light filters in to it and, and the atmosphere uh filters into it so it diffuses the edge ever so slightly um yeah yeah so i mean it's uh it's yeah it's like you said it's a pretty cool effect to to play around with you have to know how to ha handle it uh, effectively when it's just a simple cast shadow though then you could start to really mess around with the other more intricate qualities of it you know yeah i mean i guess that's why i bring that up is that it, yeah. it is it is a rule right this is a rule yeah. for how shadows work and then once you know this rule you can start like manipulating it essentially right for, right for your right. own purposes yeah i'm glad you brought that up like you know because it's not they're, they're they're principles but they are meant to you know, under, uh, train you to see those things in nature, but, and it opens the door, it, it's meant to open the door to other things, you know, uh, and to play with different qualities of light. Um, like, like for instance, rim lighting, like we were taught um, at first never to rim light your model because uh, light advances and dark recedes. And so uh, if you make something lighter, it's gonna come forward. And if you make something darker, it's gonna recede, right? Go, yeah. go back in the picture plane but with um and the reason why we were taught that was to understand how to create form on uh you know using value and so or lightness and darkness of something now when we got into understanding color well that's when the rim lighting came into play because we only had single uh, uh single light uh lighted objects you know objects that were lit by a single form a single light i should say so when you had two lights um, we were learned, we were taught like, Hey, remember that time? Like Bill actually would, would tell us, um, like, no. Hey, remember, remember I said, don't use two lights. Well, the reason why was because you were learning how to turn form with value and you just, it was best to just concentrate on that. And also you were working with a monochromatic medium. So you couldn't add a different color if you wanted to, but you can now add two lights, you know, um, a rim light, a main light, and a sort of an edge light. And it, it, there are great things about it because they help, you know, clarify the form. But in order to do it, you've got to make sure that it's a, a different color so that people on the viewer understands that the, uh, the light that's hitting the edge of the form is different from the light that's hitting the main form. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm so glad you just brought this up because I was just about to get into that on this piece. Well, I already got it for you. So move on to something else. Done. Done. Don't even have to talk about it. But it's so so true because it's it's like um, so I tend to do that if let's see, I'll, I'll mess with a, a layer here. Like um, like I, I want the 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 rim light to be really hot. Yeah, that's looking great, dude. Thanks, thanks, man. Um, so I'm gonna that that way I'm gonna distinguish the main light from from the rim light, just like Bill Tonis. Like we, we, I want it to be hot. So I'm 
I'm going to make it kind of orange. And that way, you know, like, oh, so that that's not the value. Uh, that's not some, some weird specular thing or it's not like the value of the skin or the color of the skin. It's, it's actually the color of the light that I'm seeing on the edge. And so um, that's why I'm going to make it kind of hot. I don't know if I like it hot. I might mess with the, mess with the color. Maybe it'll be really cold. Yeah, that's more interesting. It's kind of a fun thing for digitals. You can kind of mess with that stuff. Maybe really cold is the way to go. Yeah, but uh, it's almost like a blue, blue split, right? Yeah, and I think I'll warm up the main light just a little bit in like a spotlighting way. Yeah. So that it it there's contrast of temperature, which I which I really like playing with. Yeah. From Aaron Rafino, do you guys have the Aaron. style your grad school selves thought you'd have slash are making the art you thought you'd be making? Oh whoa, that's a great question. Yeah, super good. <laughs> Uh, the answer is, uh, uh, oh my God. I don't know if I can, I can tell. I mean, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, the other day and um, that wasn't Kate, not Kate. Uh, and, um, or, or Wait, my what? enemy, like Tyler. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, friends? so, and uh, they were saying like, you know, you know, your, your, your work, it's like, it's exactly like all the painters that we were talking about. It's like a combination of, it's a weird combination of everything that we were talking about, like fell in love with as, as, as art students. And I honestly couldn't see it, you know, like I wanted to be, I don't know. I think, I didn't know what, I, I just wanted, I think out of school, I think, we just wanted to be like awesome, like our heroes, right? And so we, but that always changes. Like it, it's, you you know, your eyes, my eyes so much more developed now than when I left grad school. So it's, I, if I, if I look back and if I showed myself, my grad school self, like, hey, this is what we're doing now. What would my grad school self say, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. I, it, like, I think we've talked about this on the stream before and that like our, anyone's style is, is a culmination of all their influences. Yeah. And so I think when we were in school, we were trying, we just as a means of learning, we were trying to paint like people were really liked. I think I had, yeah. I had a ton of paintings in school that were like Greg Manchez paintings, real chunky, um, heavy, yeah. heavy marks. Um, like lots of plane ships and it was just because we were trying to learn how to paint and we ended up i think our styles evolved out of the more we learned the more we tried to emulate other artists it all sort of um eventually became the shorthand for how we interpret shapes and forms and that's our style right right yeah i remember oh man I don't, yeah i don't I'm usually, I have a really good visual, pretty good visual memory. And I, I, I struggled to think like what I was thinking about. And I was thinking, I don't know what I was doing in grad school. What the I hell either. was I doing, Tyler? What the I mean, hell was I, I doing? We were studying everyone. So I think that yeah. we were a little bit manic when it comes to like trying to figure out. True. That's a great what way. Our to... style was, and we weren't even yeah. thinking about it. I don't think, I don't think most people do. No. They're, I mean, they're not I, thinking like, this is my style. They're just yeah. sort of like, this is how I draw. And I haven't really figured out what a style is. Yeah. And I, and I, I mean, we were like, what, you know, we would like, we'd have lunch. It's like, I'm thinking about doing a piece like this and like with these qualities and this and that. And like, and so we were conscious about like the stylistic decisions we were making, but it's like, I didn't, you know, one thing I will say, I didn't expect it to be just be, like my style to be uh, something I just ended up doing, to be honest with you. Like, I thought it was something that like, okay, I am now doing this style here, you know? Just yeah. Like my, yeah. my, my approach is like a, 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 and my style is a culmination of like, okay, here's what I like, you know? And this is what I just automatically do, uh, which is uh, super bizarre to think about, you know? Cause especially like in school, we were, we were taught like you you've got to 
you've got to at least look like, okay, we were manic, but we were also stressed out that like, okay, we have to have something consistent so we can get a portfolio to get work in, you know? Yeah. And I think that was the scary part, at least for me, it was like, I, I, I haven't picked a, an approach at that point. I hadn't right, picked an right. approach to making an image. Right. So I was like, oh, I haven't picked one. Like I have five different images. They all look different because I've yeah. decided on a method. Um, yeah. So I think that was scary. It was like, oh, how the hell am I going to um, have a cohesive portfolio if I've got like this piece that looks like it was done in this style and this piece that was done in this style. Um, I don't know. It took time to get that cohesive portfolio for sure. So oh, I don't yeah. know, if people yeah. out there are worried about it, but it, that, that takes time to just keep Oh my on. God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like Tyler and I would stand around and we'd go to our favorite uh, German place you know, uh, uh, Schroeder's. In San Francisco called Schroeder's. Yeah, we would have this thing called Illustration Night. And basically, it's when we had gotten our, uh, <laughs> now that I think about it, it's very reckless, but very young, stupid thing. Like, we would get our uh, surplus check for from our loans. <laughs> and we're like, let's get nuts. We're loaded. Yeah. You know, and it was totally what was going so on. That was stupid. And so, but uh, eventually, the night would like all of a sudden like turn into like, what the hell are we going to do? You know, mm -hmm. like we have every day we, we start in school is one day less that we're going to be here and one day closer to when we get out. What are we going to do? And we, we would stress out the whole time, you know, we'd have that moment. But eventually, like Tyler and I would come to the same kind of like, you know, conclusion. It's like, well, I'll see you on the other side, buddy. You know, yeah. <laughs> just I just like, love the I love the image you painted there of us of us like we got our you know, our loan check or whatever for helping yeah. us get through school from the government. And we're like, yeah, let's get fucking drinks. And then, <laughs> and then later in the night while we're nursing the end of our drinks, we're like, Oh wait, we got to pay that back. Yeah. <laughs> Which means we got to be successful here in art school. <laughs> it's tough, oh, man. man. It's tough. It was, it was, you know, we had a blast. I, I, I mean, I, I know you and I had a ton of fun in it, but it was, oh, yeah. It, we worried. I, I I spent a lot of time worrying, you know, uh, in school, you know, a ton, a ton of time. Uh, so it was really yeah. stressful, you know. I think half the time I was freaking out about like, you know, I've, I've chosen to come to this school and do this work. Yeah. But it, like, I can't just, I got to get out of here and like make money doing it. Like, gotta, yeah. I, you know, I have to be a, make a career. Yeah. But, yeah. But it, it helps when you have people like going through the same thing too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a camaraderie, I guess, to it. Yeah, totally. Oh, man. Okay. I'm getting into the nuts and bolts on this fella. Got me Sweet. Into a, a specular pass. Let's see where his skin is shiny, where it's not. That's looking great. Thanks, man. It's, I like. Um, I really have fun just doing this. I'm not like thinking about a composition really much. I'm just messing with the. How's this guy look? What's he got going on? No, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my painting. Sorry. <laughs> oh man, yours is coming together awesome. So I love that glare you have. I, I wasn't fishing. I wasn't asking for compliments. No, okay, it's I wasn't... too late. You're getting them. You're getting them. <laughs> hey, Tyler. Yeah. From modeling underscore mundane in the chat i've been following your work for years any chance of you sharing your brush pack with us also are there oh. any plans for making any type of tutorial i'd be absolutely thrilled to buy a gumroad tutorial from you i have uh, been wanting i've been wanting to do this for a while and ray's gonna give me shit right now because i've told him i wanted to do this Tyler. that's true but here's the thing here's the thing my only pushback on this is um at least okay it's not pushback. It's you brought up a, a comment. I, I would love to share my brush back, of course. But a lot of times my brushes are this brush right here, which is a round brush. <laughs> um, and it's just got a soft edge to it. Um, I'm, I'm sort of a, I have this philosophy of like, you can paint a whole entire painting with just this. Um, but I do have some other brushes. So um, I would, I would love to put that together and send that out to people. And definitely I have been floating around the idea of putting tutorials together. And I, I'm, I know 
that the lovely Kate Welch will help me do that because I am a Luddite. Listen, I'm gonna wait. I'm I'm gonna waste a uh, uh, an F in the chat on this, but F in the chat if you want to see that happen, and and. I mean, you're willing to waste your Fs in the chat. If you're going to do it now, do it. And you're tired of Tyler's excuses. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it. I promise. Um, thank you for bringing it up. And I will get a brush pack up as well. Um, but it's going to be like a bunch of manipulated round brushes for sure. So, uh, but then what, what do you think most brush packs are? <laughs> it, uh, I've seen crazy ones out there. They got all kinds of like. Yeah, but like, I mean, like, I mean, who are we talking about here? I mean, like, I think like the subtlety is where all of that, you know, and also your hand is also helpful for it. But I think the, uh, this is me giving you shit, Tyler. Great, uh, great, great. Just keep going. So let me know. The, you know, <laughs> it's the little things that make the difference. And I think, you know, if people are interested in it, then why the heck not? Oh, that's true. It's totally true. Um, and I guess just seeing like, I can show you it's like this is just a round brush that I've squished. If you want to make a cool brush, you can do it pretty quick. Um, you can just take a round one. I've I've gone into let me pull the panel out here so you can see. So it's just um oh yeah, you can't see it. Okay, well it just grab well, that, a regular that, round it brush. Is. Yeah, if, if you're interested, uh Tyler's coming out with the brush pack, so you don't have to Oh yeah, it. you know what? I'll just I'll it'll be in the brush pack. Stay tuned, everybody. It's a it's a preview. It's a preview, a free preview of it. The in the brush pack. Be in the brush pack. Uh, I I think we'll we'll just put out a free brush pack one of these days. Yeah, yeah. This I mean yeah. because uh, there's nothing like super precious about how I make weird brushes. Um, I, I'd be happy to share it with everybody. Hey, here's a question from Evacuate. Um, was going on to master's level always in your development plan, and what formed that decision? Your education planning. Uh, well, I think Tyler and I had, so we both had it undergrads where we studied stuff that wasn't exactly what we ended up wanting to do. And when we come, came out of school, I think both of us didn't have the skill level or the portfolio in order to seek, actively seek the jobs that we had wanted uh, to seek. And uh, so that's why we went to, to grad school. People go to grad school for different reasons, you know, but that was, I think, our number one reason why we went was to learn, learn traditional skills, you know, of picture making, of drawing, painting and composition, because I, I just, I was just, I know, for me, I was just completely lacking in them, you know, uh, so that's what informed my, my decision. Also, yeah. I wanted to go in for animation, but I stayed because of that reason, you know. Right, right. I think I'm, I'd say mine was pretty much the same. Like, I I wanted to focus up, and I also gotten out of. I went to Gonzaga University. I gotten out of school all, with a bachelor's already. So I was like, I mean, do I go get another bachelor's degree because I didn't right. get a sufficient art training that I wanted, or do I just go for the master's? And then um, with the master's, you know, a lot of art schools will allow you to teach. Um, so the, right. I, it, it gave me a bunch of options, which is why I went right. that way. But I mean, right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anyone needs to do that. Um, Especially I'm nowadays. Just, yeah. There's so much digital learning out there. You, you don't necessarily need to do that. It was necessary for me because I sort of have a, I need that in-person learning style. Um, yeah, me too. So I need, I need someone fun. to, to like, take my my brush and say no like this you know mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. like i remember craig craig nelson had you know i i would love thin paints like really really thin which is crazy yeah, now like because I'm, yeah like just i guess but yeah like brahm but imagine if brahm were trying to paint upside down in a <laughs> 747 that's <laughs> crashing into the ground right and so and then you would get my a version of me, you know, sure, what I sure. was trying to do. And so everything was pink because I was thin because I was really, really scared of messing up. And then um, Craig Nelson, one of my my great mentors, uh, he had he was we were in painting class with him and he uh, he took my brush. And he goes, I'm going to mix a bunch of paint. and I want you to feel the way it feels on your brush. And so he mixed. He took a, my largest brush I had and then he just said, 
you're going to need more paint. And I was like, why? I just, you know, put it out. And, and he took up all, all of the paint right out of that, that palette, you know, right off the palette and mixed up a color. And he had said, I want you to feel this. And he, I grabbed the brush and I mixed it around in my, uh, you know, I just moved it around on my palette uh, and felt the paint underneath. He goes, that's how much paint you need, you know? And I think that's hard to get across, you know, digitally right. because I had to be there and it's, it's very tactile, tactile um, stuff. So. Is that, and yeah, and if you don't have that instruction, it's like you have to, you have to suffer through figuring that out on your own oh and may God, never. Yeah. So right, I, I've right. found that in-person stuff was really important for my learning. Yeah. And, and the thing is you suffer through it because you don't, you think that it's something wrong with you, right? You don't think yeah. that it's like, oh, this is just something that you just weren't told, you know? And I mean, Tyler and I have had conversations about this. This is the reason why we started Live Brush in a sense too. One Another one besides hanging out, uh, with me wanting to hang out with Kate more and yeah, um, Ray, Ray, I, I was just like, I guess I'll tag along. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was to show like, you know, just share these fundamentals, you know, uh, and just, just talk about things that are, are like, you know, uh, you know, uh, composition or like, like what you had said with, you know, rim lighting and how to use, how to use that and what you're thinking about, because, you know, you just, you don't know what you don't know. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't know anything. Uh, going into coming into school, I mean, like nothing. I knew nothing. Uh, yeah, I, and I'd gone to four years of art training, you know. Yeah, and I, I yeah. still knew nothing. I knew nothing. So yeah, it's 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 everyone's individual learning style, and I'm not going to say like don't try and be self-taught if that's oh, how you totally, want to do it. Do it. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, totally. But I knew what I needed, and it was definitely yeah. what I needed. Yeah. And programs change. That that's like the thing. I don't know. If if I haven't kept too close up on what um, the Academy of Art is training right now, so I don't I don't know if it's the same. Right, right, yeah. I think that's some of my hesitation to say, yeah, go to art school and go to the Academy of Art because I don't know if it's the same, and I don't right. want to be like, oh, you went, I told you to go, you went, and then you didn't get the same education that I got. Right, right, right. But I mean, I think now we we don't have. I mean. Now we have you have access to again a lot of like things that you can try out though you know like smart school or like visual mm -hmm. arts passage or Wata Taye, you know and like all these great great artists that are uh, you know working that you could work with directly and then maybe you you try that out and then any other things you can go to in person so you can it doesn't have to be one or another and I think that was the big thing that we learned you know that that's the thing that we didn't have in uh, it, when we went to art school. Cause I, I don't, I don't know, Tyler. I mean, I, I think I would have maybe tried the online thing first and um, supplemented my, my, uh, my knowledge. And then when I was ready to spend some, some, you know, in-person time, which is just more money, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a lot, a lot more costly in, in mm -hmm. many ways. Um, I would then like say, okay, this is the person I want to study with. And this is what I want, you know, out of it. I want to take these three classes or, and I would study with multiple things, but you know, again, I, this is all hindsight, right? Because I, I didn't, I just didn't know any better, you know, and well, honestly, and it's, we got lucky too. I mean, that's, yeah, there was a, I think there was like a, we were in a fortunate period in time, but there was also not a ton of digital online learning tools yet. Right. Right. Um, so it was like, sure, and on hindsight, we could say, yeah, I could have done it this way. And, and I would tell people now, because there are such good digital tools, to do that first and see if it's the right learning way for you um, before you jump into, you know, a really expensive university. Um, but that, that was sort of like the, at least for, I don't know, I felt like for me, Maybe you feel the same with this, Ray. But that, that, that were that was sort of our option. If you wanted to go to art school, I, you had to go to an art school. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. W without a doubt. I, I mean, I just didn't. It just wasn't common knowledge, you know, and all of the things that were out, and there wasn't many options, you know. Uh, but now, now today, it's like, whoo, man. Yeah, there's so many options. There's so many great, great ways to learn, and I, I encourage everyone to to check it out. Like, check out as many of the digital ones as possible, and if they work for you. Amazing, like, that's perfect. So we have another question uh, from Aaron Rufino. 
while we're sort of on this topic, any thoughts on the difference between maintaining your skill level as an artist versus actively improving? Uh, I think I think they go hand in hand. Like I'm maintaining my, I want to maintain my skill level while actively improving. You know, like I think that's the thing. Like I'm always trying to get better. Like, yeah, trying, trying, trying every waking second. Like, like it's probably the reason why I give myself an extra day. You know, it's a treat for me with these live brush pieces. So you know, I'm like, even in this, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to be paint the best thing I can. And so I need it. There, there's a certain level of quality that I'm used to that I demand out of my own artwork. And that's me maintaining it is me like constantly studying and things like that. Uh, but um, I'm also doing that to, to try and get better and learn new things, you know? Uh, so it, I think they kind of go hand in hand to be, to be honest. Um, I don't know. What, what do you think, Tyler? I, yeah, I wouldn't separate them either. I mean, I think it's, I think it's something we've chatted about so many times on here is it's that brush mileage, you know, just the act right, of doing right, right. just the act of your own maintenance of, of continuing to make work is the brush mileage, but you should always be pushing it like you should always be like each piece should always be a culmination of the, the mistakes you've learned to avoid. Right. Um, in the in the previous piece. So you know, if you don't sit there and try and fix every piece you've ever done, always try and push forward and take what you learn to the next piece. I mean, that in itself is combining both of those concepts, I think. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, I think that's a, a great way of putting it. Um, shockingly yeah. enough. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You, you did good. I, you I did finally, good, Kate. I finally answered a good one. Oh, wait, this is Tyler. Oh, Oh yeah, it's me. Oh, OK. Well, that... I didn't even get into I didn't get into the hands on this guy. We only got like 10 minutes left. So. Oh, my God, Tyler. I don't know if I'm going to finish. <laughs> Ray. Oh, jeez. <laughs> how do we not have? Oh my God. I know. I was just. I had this like temperature shift that I've been really working on. Like, you know I what? Did... It's cool. It's cool. I mean, this no. is Kate's painting, so it's cool. It's cool. Oh my God. Oh my God. She's gonna be really happy to to get it when you finally finish it next year. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just going to describe to you, everyone what oh, I'm yeah. doing. Use words. No. <laughs> so whenever you have a, uh, a sunset, right? Or uh, let's say whenever you have a, a landscape, you have, and you have clouds in that landscape. If the sun is out, then the bottom part of the, the sun is going to hit the bottom part of the clouds, but the top part of the clouds are going to be illuminated or affected by the color of the sky, right? And so you're going to have, if the sun is out, you're going to have warm light, which is a color that is like kind of uh, basically dominated by orange. And then uh, the, 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 the sky is usually like is blue. So it's the shadow side of these clouds are going to be cooler. Now the more, so that's all relative. Remember, it's, it's just like value. We're just like forming cash flow. It's just like what we were talking about before. A lot of this stuff is relative. So the more uh, the sun lowers, right? The more closer to the horizon the sun is, the warmer it is, the more intense it is. And subsequently, the, uh, the, everything gets warmer, but still the relationship is still the same. You're going to have warm lights, cool shadows in this in this case. Well, because the sun is like super warm and red, and I'm going to even push it even further. Uh, I have these like uh, purple, was a violet, blue violet shadows. But as it gets over here, like in this middle part, this transition is when you see that the the cloud turning away from that light. So that's the most subtle part. And you have to be really careful with the colors because you don't want it to, if you end up putting a warm color in cool where, where a cool one should be, uh, or a cool, one, cool color where a warm should be, you're gonna get what's called muddy color, right? And that's, it, it just looks like dirt. And that's just because it's just an incorrect temperature. So with, with sky, you've gotta be really, really careful when you're doing that, which is why I was working both ends. You probably saw me do that. Uh, where I'm working the lightest and then and, and the, the lights and then the shadows because I need all this stuff set up to get this subtle stuff uh, uh, in. So, but I can't do that in eight minutes. 
That's a lot of excuses, actually, in a few minutes of time. Um, but I, this part is actually something, and maybe Ray can relate, but he's very good with color. And I struggle super hard with the what you're at right now because it's you're you're approaching the like maximum lightness of a of a hot color, right? Like you, you can only pump so much white into a cadmium orange before it turns to like chalky paste. Right. So right, so right. you're you're like, well, you're you're fighting with like the maximum value of like cad yellow light is like yeah. the brightest you want to get because the more you put pump into that, the chalkier and like whiter it's gonna get. Right. Um and th this is so like when I'm doing effects and traditionally now that I've been doing so many more oil paintings, I'm really thinking about those like values of, of the, of hot light sources. Um, and, and how, how easy it is to get into this like muddy, this muddy color scenario, like you're talking about. Oh, uh, dude, um, it's so, so easy, you know? And uh, yeah, I think it's like, you have to, the the part so i guess to understand what we're talking about when in order to make a color or a value or color lighter right you add a lighter color but what if you want to make a lighter yellow well you have to add white to it right and a lot of times you add white to just lighten the color regardless um so white makes allows you to get tints of a given color but when it comes to temperature warm cool white will actually cool down your colors because not, i mean if it's because it's a color itself it's kind of like a purplish color would you yeah I mean, would you say I, I wouldn't say i i so all right well there's a debate on it right because it depends on the white and some people whites have different like lead white flake white is uh, like a lot warmer you know in in a sense right, so, sure. so a lot of people there you know some people People say like, you know, I'm going to take the whole Bill Mon route and say like, well, white is not really a color. It's just used to make tints, but it has a cool temperature. Right. If, yeah. I guess that's what I meant is it, uh, it has a temperature to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, which when I say it out loud, doesn't make any sense. But, you know, I'm, you know, when you're don't know anything and Bill's saying it, you're like, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know. Well, so, so I, the reason I bring this up is is when I'm trying to delicately shift colors like this um, and, I put it and I'm putting titanium white in it, it, it gets, it cools it off. It, it, it gets like a weird chalkiness. But if I, if I put like yellow or I mix or I make like a really, really warm white, like I have some gambling, like warm white and cool white. Mm -hmm. um, if I use those instead, I'm able to like control the, the um purity of the chroma a lot right. better yeah 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 because i mean again titanium white is a really common color that's used just for everybody to know it but the problem is it's it's a pretty strong tinter it's like it gets you know uh that's all we used in art school but i remember like you know so it when you mix it with something it really pushes around the color and um I've experimented with a lot of artists like to use flake white or lead white. I mean, it's a little bit more dangerous to, to work with because you don't want uh, lead in your you know, bloodstream from being absorbed in your skin, which is why we wear gloves. But uh, it, it tends to be a, a more subtler mixer. But I think what, Ty, what Tyler's describing is actually like a really great way of maintaining uh, the intensity of your color is by using lighter colors, you know, um, like a cool yellow when it comes to something that's warm. Cause I think that's, that's the big problem with it's specifically warm light because with cool light, it doesn't really matter. You just add more white and you're good to go, you know? Right. Uh, and, right. But with warm light, that's not the case. Um, so. Well, I've even found it on like, say I'm doing something for magic and it's like a blue magical effect. Right. Right. Sure, right. Magical effect. Yeah, totally. But it's totally. blue. Right. But it's like, OK, so I can just pump white into this and it'll stay cool because it's blue. But right. I've actually found if I if I mix more of like a warm white, like that gambling warm white. Yeah. As I'm as I'm approaching like the light source of that blue, it's way more vibrant because it it's, you know, it's that color theory thing where I've, I've actually made the blue warmer as it gets to the light source. 
So it's more um, you get that vibration between the two, the cool, right. cool and the and this hotter or a blue that's closer to a warmer color, right. even though it's right. getting closer to white. It, it's this weird. I found yeah. like more vibrancy coming out of it when I'm playing with those edges. Totally. Totally. Yeah, that's a that's the that's the fun stuff right there. Uh, Two go minute figure. Warning, that's a, folks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two minutes. Right and get done, everybody. Uh, right and get done. No, this one he can take his time on. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, you're the. Client, I know, but right? I, prom so. I promised everyone that I would finish one on stream <laughs> and didn't. And then... Yeah. You know what? You shouldn't set him up like that, Ray. You know, I blame Howard. Uh, yeah, for, for not being here. Out, for not being here and. <laughs> Well, I don't know if, I mean, I might finish this on another stream, um, but I've just been having fun with this one. So maybe, maybe I won't, yeah. I don't know. Well, I'll, we're going to start another piece, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think next week, everybody, we are going to probably go back to how we started with the, the more 80s post. They're like back 80s. again. They're back again, I was still. Um, we're going to go back to that sort of 80s um, characters. I'm not sure. I don't know if we decided on it when we chatted the other yesterday, Ray. No, we didn't, but we talked about possibly, I don't want to give anyone's hopes up. We talked about possibly doing Predator. Yeah, that was a possibility. Um, Snake, Pliskin. Oh, man. oh, yeah, Escape from New Escape York. Escape from New York. Everybody in Predator is so sweaty. Oh, um, yeah, see? So oh, no, it's another one of those. Because they're owls. in the jungle. No, Kate. I didn't know. I didn't know. This is How my... else would you know they're in the jungle? Oh, they're not sweaty. Oh, no. Oh, man. So well, for those of you who don't know, Tyler has a... Kate pointed this out. There's a, uh, Tyler has a thing for sweaty people. Because everything that he's uh, painted has been sweaty. Look, we're going to have to go over this in the next stream because we're out of time. Okay. Yeah, we are. Right. So, um, <laughs> but um, we'll su we'll surprise everybody. Evan Quake Classic points Tyler. out that the uh, the demon isn't sweaty, but I just think he's just not sweaty yet. Not yet. Not I haven't right. even put those speculars on yet. I haven't even put them yeah. on. All right, you guys want to sign off? <laughs> yeah, we yes. got to sign off, folks. This was another great um, special light box um, edition, and enjoy the rest of the light box weekend if you came in from light box. Uh, there's so much going on today and tomorrow. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, um, so much good stuff. But yeah, I'm Tyler Jacobson. Um, you can find me at Tyler Jacobson Art, and also I think that's my um, Instagram as well. So uh, thanks for joining us. And Ray, uh, I'm uh, Ray Bonilla. You can find me at uh, RayBonilla.com and Ray Bonilla Painter on uh, Instagram. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for for joining us. Uh, please uh, do check out uh, everyone else's uh, uh, streams on on Lightbox. It's just a uh, it's pretty. It's really great to to be a part of something like this. Um, Kate, are you streaming next? Yeah, yeah. she's about to stream. Everybody oh, so ev to everyone just stuff. just stay stick around and go over to Kate's stream. No problem. You oh, know, because you're in, you're in for. You think this show is good? <laughs> yeah, and she's. Watch. I think she's going to be playing unboxing, which is probably Un one of the greatest unpacking. unpacked. Yeah, one of the most anticipated video games of my life, and. You guys gotta go yeah. check it out. You yeah, check yeah. It out. So this is yeah. So if you want to see how his streams actually really run, you know, when you don't have to, you know, a corral, you know, crazy people like myself and Tyler, you just go over to Kate's stream. Pro you know. streamer. All right. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Bye bye. All right. Clear.